Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So heading into the open, we have pre-market resistance at the 93.75 to 95.75 area. That's the zone where ES has been balancing in the overnight session. And in order to get a upside breakout above that zone, we are going to want to see some pretty decent upside momentum and uh, some strength on the advanced decline. Now, the AD doesn't have to be extremely strong in order to continue going higher because uh, the prior close is right here at 94. But uh, what we don't want to see is a very negative AD because that can quite easily lead to a pullback to the 86 to 88 initial support zone, uh, the prior VPOC at 89. And that's an area where buyers can be active on first test. So yesterday we saw the balance breakout. And the question today is whether that breakout is really going to stick. Now, given the light volume that we're trading in right now and um, the lack of any major economic report on the day time frame today and uh, with Yellen speaking tomorrow, it just seems unlikely that we're going to get another big move to the upside. Uh, we can certainly go up and test 98.75 to 2175. But at that point, um, I think responsive sellers will have pretty decent risk reward and a reason to jump in and be active at that zone. So um, right off the open, we know we've been balancing the upper part of yesterday's range. The market can really tip either way. And uh, if there is strong upside momentum, we can go up to 98.75 to 2175. As long as we're not going up in a context where it seems like a trend up type scenario, right? So as long as we're not going up on extremely strong internals and uh, a very unusually strong tick, like plus you know 1100 or something, uh, then we should be seeing uh, responsive sellers active at 9875 to 2175. Given the large move that the market's made over the last couple of sessions, um, it's more likely that any continuation higher will result in more balanced activity rather than just a strong continued trend to the upside. So 9875 to 2175 is a spot where sellers can be active. 0275 naked VPOC is another level. And then finally, 0575 to 0775 is a zone where sell side can be active as well. On the downside, if the market fails at uh, initial resistance, we can still get a pullback down into the 8688 initial support or uh, at least the previous VPOC at 89. So if we get a failure at initial resistance, uh, you know, the market doesn't have to necessarily just put in a small rotation, but it can actually come down towards 8688 and then find buyers over there. Overall, the idea is that the market is more likely to balance within a range, and it's simply going to be a matter of identifying where that range can take place. If we get a breakout off the open, then the range can be from initial resistance uh, down to initial support. And in the event that the market actually fails to take out pre-market resistance, uh, then you know we can come down right from there to 86, 88, and potentially even 78 to 81, which is really the breakout spot from yesterday. That's the larger time frame balance breakout, and uh, the expectation then would be for responsive buyers to defend the uh, support zones on the way down. So the first support area at 86, 88, uh, you know, a long setup over there makes sense as long as we're not seeing any major weakness in the market uh, because, you know, the target from there has to be a minimum of a move back up to pre-market resistance. And if there is a big disconnect in the underlying internals, let's say if the fast decline line is, uh, you know, just completely uh, getting weak, uh, below minus 1,000, getting weaker, then the upside potential would be fairly limited. So you may want to skip that. The 78 to 81 is a zone where, in most scenarios, you're going to want to fade that zone and go long there, expecting a move back up towards the um, prior low of 84, back up towards 86, 88, and potentially even uh, a little bit higher than that. So overall, we know that we're in a balanced breakout environment right now, but it's the day after the breakout, and today is really where we kind of find out whether that breakout above 78 to 81 is really going to stick. And in order to do that, the market doesn't necessarily have to just go parabolic again to the upside. It can simply balance at higher prices. And as long as it's balancing above 78 to uh, 81, we know that the breakout is technically still intact and uh, we can simply balance at higher prices. So the default scenario today is to look for ES to actually maintain yesterday's breakout and balance um, at a higher range. Right, and that can be up to 98.75 to 2175, 
or in the event of a breakout above that zone, it could be up to 0.575 to 0.775. But the higher you go, the riskier uh, the market actually gets in terms of uh, absolute price for the buyers, right? So um, if you're buying 98.75 to 2.175, the risk is on the buy side. Same thing with 0.575 to 0.775. So you really want to be uh, tuned into the immediate momentum situation in the market. You know, if you're not seeing upside momentum, then it doesn't mean you can't go long, but then you want to buy pullbacks, not breakouts, right? Because then breakouts are going to tend to fail if there's really no underlying momentum behind the move. So keep a close eye on the NYC tick. That is going to provide a pretty good guide on just, you know, which side is really dominant um, in the moment. And if you're not seeing that upside momentum, then it's probably better to sit out and wait for a better setup rather than, um, you know, risking entering the market at a very aggressive price. And then, you know, the momentum just kind of fizzles and it doesn't really go anywhere. So right now the risk is technically on both sides and you do have to be more selective. You know, the volatility has contracted. Uh, we're running on lighter volume. So there's less likely to be major follow through on any directional moves one way or the other, right, up or down. So, I mean, even if we go down and uh, the market gets exhausted, let's say after a, uh, you know, five to eight point move, then it's unlikely that's just going to continue right from there. The higher probability scenario is that the market will then at least provide a rotation and balance a bit before making the next move. So you just have to tweak your execution and your tactics on the day time frame to align yourself with the type of environment that you're trading in. And right now it's a lighter volume, um, lower volatility environment that we're in with no real major econ reports due. So um, we just need to uh, you know, adjust our executions accordingly and make sure that we're not getting overly aggressive in a market where the opportunity potential may not be very high. So off the open, keep an eye on the NYC tick, keep an eye on the relative volume to see if you know volume is picking up. If it starts to pick up, then the range can be a little bit better on the day time frame. But uh, you know, if it remains fairly light, then we're probably going to get a um, relatively narrow range uh, balance session uh, where, again, the market can go higher from here, but uh, the um, reward potential beyond the initial resistance zone is pretty questionable, and the upside potential above initial resistance is pretty questionable too. So uh, at that point, you know, that could be a short setup on the downside, 86.88 as long as we're not seeing any major downside momentum and a major disconnect and weakness on the AD, that could still be a long. Um, 78 to 81 is a um, automatic long setup in most scenarios, as long as we're not uh, completely liquidating and trending lower. Uh, that's in a spot where um, the expectation is for responsive buyers to be active. So overall, we're looking for two-sided movement, and uh, we're just going to be looking to see where that movement can take place. In the event of a failure at pre-market resistance, it could be a move down towards yesterday's low, um, you know, 78.81. But if we break out, then we could balance between initial support and initial resistance, possibly a little bit higher if there's a lot of momentum. So those are our main ideas heading into the open. Keep in mind, this is, uh, you know, a way to prepare for the market. It's not necessarily an all-out prediction. So, uh, you know, pay attention to what the market's doing in real time and then use the trade plan as the backdrop, right, uh, to understand the context that you're trading in. But uh, as far as the trades go, we do have to spot them, of course, in real time. You know, this is not a automated system. So those are our main ideas. Let's see which side is dominant off the open, and we'll take it from there.